it's 10.30, we're going to make a start. Welcome, good morning, welcome to St Andrew's Online. We have just had the first church service in St Andrew's building since the 15th of March. We had a nine o'clock said communion and uh, it was a real joy to gather uh, and uh, to physically um, be present with each other. Uh, we're looking forward to that point at the 10.30 service at the beginning of September when we can do that. And, um, but for the moment, we are continuing to enjoy sitting in the comfort of our homes and uh, worshipping in that way. So um, uh, one or two notices from me just before we start. It's an all-age service, so we're all together throughout the service. And uh, some uh, real treats coming up for you. A uh, great big Bible story, the, the, the last big Bible story before the summer break. So we'll enjoy that. And uh, uh, we're going to start our series on Jonah looking at Jonah chapter 1. We finished looking at Job, um, now we're on to Jonah in these summer months. Uh, Jonah's a great book, full of uh, humour uh, and full of challenge, and so we're going to be exploring uh, all that as we go through it over the next four weeks. Uh, just to say, uh, it'd be great to pray for the reopening of the coffee house. We're hoping that will happen on Tuesday, but as you can imagine, uh, it's not without challenge, and there are some uh, lots of uh, difficult things which we have to work through uh, together to, before we can reopen. So please um, do uh, hold us in your prayers as we work through those uh, decisions. And uh, as we uh, gather, it's worth saying that the Holiday Club is happening at the end of August. It's happening online this year. Uh, so there'll be uh, just about an hour of uh, videos, which will be crafts, songs, talks, uh, and I think there'll be some exercise too. Uh, and that will uh, happen uh, during the week, 20, I think it's the 24th to 28th of August. So do be sharing that with your friends uh, and uh, any families that you know who might just enjoy that. And it'll be an opportunity for them to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me uh, say a prayer before we begin our service this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the God of the whole universe. Thank you that you're in charge. And thank you that you seek to use us for your glory. Thank you that you stoop down and you hold each of us in your hands. And so we pray now that uh, as we gather virtually in our homes, uh, wherever we are right now, whether we're in uh, a kitchen, whether we're sitting down at home in, in the lounge, uh, whoever we're with, we pray that we'd know your presence right now and that we'd respond to your call on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fantastic. Well, we're going to hear now uh, an action song. So get your uh, arms ready. You might want to stand up and get ready for this because we've got some actions to do. It's called Shine from the Inside Out. And uh, it's going to be led by Sandy Spanton uh, with some help from her family, Emily and Jenny. So over to the Spanton.
Thank you so much, Spantum family. That was really lovely. What a great message to begin our service with this morning. You know me, you love me, so fill me and send me. Uh, that is uh, what we ask of God and what we know about the God who is there and the God who loves us, the God who's made himself known to us in the person of Jesus. As we move on in our service, we're going to have a time of confession now. It's going to be led by uh, Serena, which is a pre-recording, and uh, she's going to take us through uh, the beginning of the service, a time to bring our brokenness to God. So over to Serena for this time of confession. Sorry is a really hard word to say, isn't it? If you're anything like me, saying sorry is really tough. But saying sorry is part of every Christian service around the world every Sunday. We call it confession. And it's important to say sorry for the times we've done things that have hurt God, others and ourselves. This morning, we're going to say sorry in a different way. I'm going to use a jar of water and a vitamin C tablet. What I want you to do is focus in your mind on something that you want to say sorry to God for. And then I'm going to drop this vitamin C tablet into the water. And as it falls, it's going to start to melt away and dissolve. And as you watch it melt away, I want you to experience God's forgiveness. Allow him to show you how he melts your sin away when you say sorry to him. The Bible says he doesn't remember our sins anymore when we tell, tell him about them and say sorry. So let me pray a quick prayer before I drop this in and you can watch it dissolve and know that God takes away your sin when you say sorry to him. So Lord, we thank you that you forgive us. And when we run away from you like Jonah, Lord, we can run back and you will dissolve those things that keep us from you. Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Serena. And uh, we're reflecting on that really helpful time just to see our sins being taken by, by the Lord. We're looking at this story of Jonah now in the next four weeks over the month of August. Uh, and it's... Uh, uh, a crazy story really, divided up into these four sections, four neat chapters, and it's written very much as a story to, to engage us in, in the story of what happens to Jonah. And so today we're looking at chapter one, and this is our big Bible story, and it's going to be the last big Bible story for the summer. We're hoping to resume them sometime in the new year, and in September, uh, but this is the last one for the moment, so enjoy it and uh, enjoy this story of Jonah as we begin it. Thank you over to Serena for that. <sighs> it's time to get cosy with a good book again and today we're going to read another story from my book of big bible stories and this story is called Jonah Runs Away From God. There was once a man named Jonah. Jonah was sitting on his own one day when he heard God speak to him. Jonah, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. My people have made a wrong turn, and they need to know I want them to turn back to me. I wonder what 
what you would do if God spoke to you that clearly. Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from God. He went down to a place called Joppa. He bought a ticket and got on a boat, trying to sail away from God. There's no way I'm going to Nineveh. The people there are so scary. I know, if I keep on running, I can run away from God. Then suddenly, God sent a mighty wind over the sea. There was a storm so big that the boat looked like it was going to tear in half. There were some sailors on the boat and they were very afraid. Ah, we're going to drown! Somebody help us! The waves were crashing, the wind was howling, the soldiers were screaming, Jonah was sleeping. The captain saw this and was angry. How could you sleep at a time like this? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will help us. The sailors were sure that Jonah was the one who was causing the storm. It must be because he had made his God angry. Why are we trapped in this storm? Who are you anyway? Tell us. I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, the God of the earth and the God of the seas. The sailors were even more terrified when they heard this. They knew Jonah was running away from God and they were worried they were going to drown with him. But what should you do it? What should we do to you to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea. This terrible storm has been all my fault. Throw me into the sea and it will become calm again. But the sailors rowed and rowed. The stormy sea was too strong for them. And they weren't getting anywhere. So they gave up and they picked Jonah up and threw him into the strong sea and the storm stopped at once. Wow, God is so powerful. We will serve him from now on. Jonah splashed about in the sea. Then he saw a huge fish. God had a plan. He would get this huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah would stay inside the fish for three days and three nights. And there he couldn't get away from God. So with a big gulp, Jonah sank into the fish's dark belly. The end. Thank you so much, Serena, for telling us that story. Thank you for Ed for uh, putting it all together. It's a great special effect. Thank you to all the actors and uh, what a great um, performance that was. Uh, and this fascinating story of Jonah. We're going to see what happens to Jonah as the story uh, progresses. We're going to sing now. So uh, it's a great song. The old cocks are going to perform it for us live. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Stand up and join in with the actions. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. 
Step by step we're moving forward, little by little taking ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon, long holes come, tumbling down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. And all they might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven We want to see Jesus lifted high The banner that flies across this land That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven We want to see, we want to see We want to see Jesus lifted high We want to see we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little taking ground. Every prayer a powerful weapon, strongholds come, tumbling down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We're going to see. We're going to see, we're going to see Jesus lifted high. We're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see Jesus lifted high. Wow, thank you so much to the old Cox and well done to all of you who are joining in at home with that. Uh, what a great way to, uh, to get us uh, going this morning and uh, praising the name of Jesus. We want to see his name, Jesus, lifted high in our community, in our nation, in this world. And uh, we're now going to have our Bible reading. Serena is going to read uh, the Bible reading for us, and then she's going to preach for us. So, uh, Serena, over to you for chapter one of Jonah. Just do a little bit of stand swapping, and hopefully you can hear me. I know it's a little bit strange uh, that I'm wearing a mask, but I assure you I am smiling. I assure you of that. Uh, this morning we are looking at the story of Jonah 1. And Jonah 1 is an incredible story, and it teaches us a lot about God and a lot about us. But before we start this morning, I'm just going to quickly grab my Bible to read to you the story of Jonah 1. So Jonah flees from the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot 
fell on Jonah. So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord. The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did not, sorry, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we're exploring this wonderful and slightly crazy story of Jonah 1. We're looking at this first chapter. And as I said, this first chapter teaches us a lot about God and a lot about us as humans. And there are three main things that I think this book has to teach us. There are more than these three things, but these are the ones that jump out at me. Number one, it is not possible to run from God, but we try don't we? We try and run from him. What happened in the story? Well, Jonah had a very clear message given to him. There were no two ways about it. God had told him what to do. And what we see happen is Jonah didn't like what God told him to do. Wasn't that Jonah wasn't sure it was God? Sometimes we're not quite sure, are we? Jonah was sure but he just didn't like what he had to do. So what does he do? He runs. But we see in the story that it's just impossible to outrun God. It doesn't work. Wonder how many of us try to do that. Wonder how many of us hear something perhaps or feel something or read something from the Bible. We think it's God's. Sometimes we know it's God, but we choose to run. And it's so human, isn't it? You know, if there's something I don't like, I'm probably not going to do it. But the difference is when it's God that asks us, even if we don't like it, we know that it's God's plan and it's for our best. So we learn that humans want to run, but it's not possible. Number two... I think God loves people so much that he will send a warning if they're slightly going off course. And this is what the whole story of Jonah is about. Jonah is not sent to condemn people, but rather to warn them that their actions will lead them to a place that is not with God. And God wants them to be with him. So Jonah's whole mission was not one of Um, condemnation, but it was one of asking people to turn back to God because their ways were leading them away from him. And you know, God, I believe, wants us to do the same in the world. Maybe you'll be at school and you'll see somebody doing something that you know hurts God or hurts themselves or somebody else. I wonder if you have the courage to say something in that moment. God might ask us to tell people when they're going the wrong way. 
And thirdly, <laughs> and my favorite thing, and I want to focus on this a bit, is that God can do everything he asks us to do all by himself, but he chooses to ask us to join in. You see, the story of Jonah, it's not like God didn't know Jonah was going to mess up. God knew before he even told Jonah what to do, because he's God, that Jonah wouldn't do it. But he still asked him. Isn't that amazing? He still asked him. And it's a privilege to be asked to join in with God's work. It's like being asked to join in with building a tower. Imagine you're with a toddler and they ask you to join them building their tower. They could do it all by themselves, but they want the fun of you joining in. And there's a great quote that I read this week. I love it. And it's from C.S. Lewis, that famous writer who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. And C.S. Lewis says this, God seems to do nothing for himself which he can possibly delegate to his creatures. He commands us to do slowly and blunderingly what he could do perfectly and in the twinkling of an eye. God asks us to join in. How do you feel about that? I wonder if sometimes it feels too much. I would say to you this morning, don't worry, God will equip you. He doesn't call the equipped, but he equips the called. But the thing I really want to focus on very briefly today, just for a couple more minutes, is the idea that God gives us second chances. Because if you're like me, you run away, you mess up. We all do. That's part of the human experience, brokenness, failure. It happens to us all. It's not easy, it's painful, but let's see what God will do when we don't give up, but get up and try again. So I just want to do something really simple, really, really simple with a piece of paper. And I want you to look at this piece of paper and imagine that it's Jonah. And you know the story of Jonah. You know what happens. We've just read it. We've just seen it. So what happens to Jonah? Well, he decides that he knows best, basically. He's not going to listen to what God has said, partly because the people he's being sent to are terribly scary. They are the rulers of the Assyrian Empire. They have a lot of power, and they probably will not take very kindly to what God has asked Jonah to tell them. Wonder if that sounds familiar. Sometimes God's, God asks us to do something, and we're terrified of what other people are going to say or do. We're terrified of their reaction. And so we don't even try. We just stop in our tracks because fear paralyzes us. That's what happened to Jonah. So he decided to run. And as you know, the running led to a boat. The boat led to a storm. The storm led to the sea. And the sea led to a fish. And the fish led to darkness. And there was Jonah in the fish for three days and three nights. And you could say at this point, I'm just going to scrumple the paper up because he'd really made a mess of it, really made a mess of it. But, you know, God's story, I'm convinced, never ends with a scrunched up mess. Because as I said earlier, when we get lost, when we run away, God doesn't say, get lost. He says, get up and try again. He knows we're going to mess up when he chooses us. And he gives us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance when we come back to him and say sorry. He is the God of chances. And something that really struck me when I read this story this week was that even when Jonah was being held over the side of a boat... 
He was a witness to God's power. What do you mean, Serena, saying that? He was being held over a boat. God didn't look very powerful in that moment. Yet he did. If you read the text, it says at that moment, when Jonah was held over the side of the boat and the sea got calm, the people who did not know God on that boat said, wow, we're going to follow this God. Isn't that incredible? Even when Jonah was being held over the side of a boat, God was using that failure to show his power. And that's so true of us and our lives. You know, I've had so many failures in my life, in my life even. I haven't had several, just one. But what happens with each of those failures is that God uses that weak effort for his glory. And why would God choose to use broken people? Isn't that cruel if he knows they're going to mess up anyway? Why would he set them up to fail, you might be thinking? But I'm convinced that the reason God chose Jonah was not because Jonah could do it perfectly, better than God. He couldn't. But God could teach Jonah something about himself in the journey. So God is really good at recycling. He's awesome. He takes the things that look like rubbish, that look like failure, and when things are done for him, he's just got this way of making things whole again. And you know, this paper doesn't look perfect. You can see the lines, you can see the experience, you can see the journey. But what God does is he makes us whole again, even with our lines, even with our failures, even with our journey that hasn't been straightforward. And as we continue to read the book of Jonah, that's what we're going to see. The journey of Jonah finding out about himself, finding out about God, and finding out that even in his weakness, that God was strong. And God could use even his frailest, weakest attempts to bring about his will and his glory. So I wonder where you are this morning. I know you're at home, but where are you inside? Are you listening to this and just thinking, well, it's fine for you to say that, Serena, but you don't know how much I've failed. You don't know how much I've messed up. Maybe you think there's no chance for you because you've just run so far from God. Look at the story of Jonah. He ended up in a fish in the darkness. He ended up, sorry about this if you're eating your breakfast, being puked onto the beach and all of that was being used by God. All of it. The darkest moments, all of it being used by God. And the last thing is, I wonder if this morning you're just feeling as though none of this is relevant to you because God wouldn't ask you to do anything in the first place because you're not worthy. Why would he ask me to do anything? He created you. He knows you intimately. You belong to him. He knows what you're good at. He's given you the things you're good at. He knows your struggles. And he doesn't use perfect people. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing up here. He doesn't use perfect people. But in the journey, he makes us more like him. And in the story of Jonah, we're going to see the similarities between Jonah's story and Jesus' story. Three days, three nights in the belly of a fish, and Jonah got out, sent the message, saved the people of Nineveh. Three days in the tomb, and Jesus got up, rose again victorious, went out, and we, without even saying anything, just his presence saved us. 
the darkest moments that look like failure are being used by God. The cross now is a sign of victory, but on Good Friday it wasn't. It was the darkest moment possible, but God was using it. Let God use those dark moments. Let him take what you believe to be rubbish and make it whole again. Amen. Serena, thank you so much for that uh, really encouraging and challenging message from the book of Jonah this morning. What a great way to start our series in this fascinating story. And uh, that uh, idea that God is a God who says, get up. And God is a God of second chances, uh, that he loves to restore, the great recycler. I love that image. Even with our lines, God is able to restore us and use us. And uh, what a lovely uh, way to uh, start our service and uh, start our uh, series in the book of Jonah. And we look forward to seeing what happens as the story progresses. What will Jonah do now? And uh, John Bolton will be preaching to us next week uh, on chapter two. So we look forward to that. But for now, as we reflect on what we've heard, perhaps something that Serena has said Uh, something in God's word. God has maybe spoken to you or put his finger upon something uh, in your life. Or maybe it's time to just reflect on that as Heidi leads us in our next song, Holiness, Holiness. Over to you, Heidi. Thank you.
Heidi, what a lovely way to reflect on what we've heard this morning. Now, the God who is in control of the whole world, the God who uh, in control of the, the oceans, the seas, the storm, and the God who is in control of the fish in those oceans is a God who speaks to us and invites us to come to him and to speak to him. We're going to do that now in prayer as we come to this almighty God, and the uh, Preswell family are going to help us do that. So I'm going to hand over to Chrissy and her children, uh, uh, Eva and George, and they're going to lead us in a time of prayer as we come before God Almighty. Thank you to the Preswells. Let us pray. We pray for those who feel left out in our community. Help us always to welcome the stranger, whatever the cost. May our homes and churches be places of welcome hospitality and love, that all may have the chance to know and see you in the warmth of those around them. We pray for countries where there is not enough food. May we be generous so there is enough to feed the whole world, the whole planet. Help us to look after each other, help us and be kind to all. Help us not to be selfish but always to consider others. Lord, we long for the day that when everyone will be equal. Help us to part of making that happen. We pray for those who are lonely and have no one to eat with them. May we open our doors to our neighbours so that love and friendship can flourish and all can enjoy the feast. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Chrissy. Thank you, Eva. And thank you, George, for those lovely prayers. I love the way you said, Amen, Amen, Amen at the end. In a, in a real sort of spirit of unity. We've been hearing, haven't we, how God is a God of amazing grace, how he uh, did not leave Jonah in the situation of, of being away from him, but he went to rescue Jonah and to restore Jonah and to seek to use Jonah for his purposes. And so we're going to finish with a final song now, singing of the God of amazing grace. I'm going to hand over to the Needhams now, to Mike, Fiona, and to Oliver, who are going to lead us as we finish our service this morning by singing of the God of grace who loves us. <laughs> Grace of me, 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 me. 
us fall, and grace will lead me home. When we've been a ten thousand years, by shining as the sun. Thank you so much to the Needhams for playing that final hymn for us, Amazing Grace. We believe in a God full of grace, full of love, who longs to lead us home. Shall I pray as we close our service this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who speaks to us, who calls us by name, and who longs for us to work with you, to help you, to build your kingdom. And Father, when we run away from you, as we do, you restore us, you pick us up, you say, get up, and you long to put us back on our feet. We thank you that you're a God of grace, and we thank you that you long to use us. And so we pray for your blessing upon us this week, and pray that you keep us safe, you protect us, and give us your light and your hope and lead us home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just before the Needhams play us out with some music, just wanted to say a big thank you to all those who've played a part in the service this morning, whether uh, behind the scenes and the technical desk, uh, whether you've been a musician playing either live or recorded, uh, or doing the prayers or preaching or whatever. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who's contributed uh, in whatever way to the service this morning. We pray it's come as a blessing to you in your homes, uh, whether you've been watching on YouTube or uh, Facebook uh, or whether you're in the Zoom room. It's great to have you in whatever way you've been engaging with us this morning. And uh, the Needhams are going to play us out with a short piece of music. In this time, you're welcome to grab a, a drink and uh, then we're going to share some news as a church family. Do use the chat get the chat window up, and uh, we've got Ian McGill here, our Associate Minister, and Serena are going to come up on stage and uh, share some chat together, and then we'll go into our usual breakout rooms uh, to get to know one another a little better and share some more personal uh, prayer requests and news. So uh, over to the Needhams, who are going to play us out with some music now. Thank you.
that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for Welcome back. I hope you've uh, got a brew and uh, you enjoyed the service this morning. We've got Ian and uh, Serena with us. Hi. And already got some messages on the chat. Don't know if uh, Serena, do you want to share Sandy one? Spanton, you had a birthday. Your birthday was yesterday, so Saturday. And Paul is saying he's not allowed to say which one it was, <laughs> but she's catching up with him. And I don't know how old you are, Paul, so that doesn't really help me. But happy birthday, Sandy. We won't sing to you because, you know. Because <laughs> we shouldn't have sung last week. <laughs> We're slight, slight mistake there, but um, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, you can't get away without in this church without uh, people knowing about your birthday. It's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the other birthday? We've got Phil coming up as well, Phil on Friday. And is that Phil and Alison's wedding anniversary as well? Could be. Could it's be. Coming up. Yeah. Oh, oh, Ian! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I didn't know this. <laughs> So Don McGill's just put Ian McGill in it. Happy anniversary to my mum and dad, 34 years today. Whoop, whoop. We should give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Dominic. Absolutely. Wait till I see him later. <laughs> and a big round of applause to you, Karen. <laughs> that sounded quite yes. rude, didn't yeah. it? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't yeah. mean it like that. <laughs> yeah, 34 years. Poor Karen, eh? <laughs> Fantastic. Blessings, yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem that long. I don't know how the time's gone. I mean, many people have given their anniversaries up here. Some have been 60 years or more, haven't they? You know, and it seems, and it was yours last week, uh, two weeks ago, 20 years, wasn't it? You think 34 is not, not that many, is it? But if someone says 60, 60 years or more, it's, it's amazing. But a tremendous blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> and Phil Alcock, I think that was. It's disappeared now, but Phil, I think, has a birthday on Friday. Is that right? Is it your birthday yeah. on Friday, Phil? It was birthday next Friday. Happy birthday to you. And an and and anniversary, was and an it? an anniversary as well, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, a wedding anniversary. anniversary as well. It's Fantastic. a good time of the year for the Alcock Fantastic. household. Fantastic. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Brilliant. Who can I pick out? If you're wondering why we're looking all over the place, yeah, we're, we're trying to keep really track well. of the... Uh, the, yeah. your pictures which are on this screen and then the chat window which is on the screen to our left so if we're looking like we're kind of in a daze <laughs> looking a bit lost wondering at that, that is that is why so um, i don't know who else is on the other screen i don't know who's on the screens is it dave dave can you flick over so i can see who's on page two ah we've now got the 
the chat on this screen as well. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, Ian's on the lookout. Oh, on the lookout, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see uh, uh, Edgar and Annette up there. Bless you, Edgar and Annette, for your, your lovely message to us the other day. It's much appreciated. Thank, thank you so much for your wonderful encouragement. That's, 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 that's really much appreciated. Bless you. It's good to see you. And I can see Martin and Elizabeth as well. Hi, Martin and Elizabeth. We've got away from them. That's nice. Good, good to see you. And there's a lady there called Davina. Hi, Davina. I've seen you a few times, and I'm not sure we've had a chance to say hello to you before. But it's lovely to see you, and thank you for joining us for our services. I don't, not sure if we've met or not, but I'm just, I'm just going to wave to you to say hello. Good to see you, Davina. And I can see my lovely wife, Karen, actually. Happy anniversary, Karen. <laughs> We've got plans for later, I know. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, Claire, oh, Claire's Davina just clarifying. Claire's, oh, Claire's just clarifying. Right. Yeah. Lovely to, to see you, Davina. Oh, Over okay. in Bristol. Oh, oh in Bristol, in Bristol right. right. Okay. Yeah. okay. We've got a third page, Dave. I don't know if there's a third page. I can pounce on someone. Who's up there? Oh, I can see Phil, Phil, and looks like... Oh, is that Nikki Long's mum? Nikki, Phil, yeah. is it Nikki's mum? Is that Nikki's mum? Yeah. yeah. Hello, yeah. Nikki's mum. Come on, we've got to wave as well. Great. Well done. Good to see you all. A lovely comment from Pippa about the flowers. Isn't it lovely yes. to have flowers back in church? Uh, we so went good. into lockdown during Lent, so actually we had quite a few weeks yeah. before lockdown yeah. without oh. flowers. Oh. Oh. oh, Serena's seen something. Oh, what is this it? is very exciting. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you. Um, someone's just written, uh, Val Mead has just written that it's Sue and Richard de Jong's Ruby wedding anniversary today. Oh, wow. I don't know if they're with us. They're, I haven't seen no, them this morning. They're not. They must be celebrating. They're out celebrating with, uh, oh, with family. Well, so. a very happy Brilliant. anniversary yeah. if you're watching this later to you. Lovely to celebrate that. And, and uh, Annette says, Annette Ruddock says, we will celebrate 48 years, I think that says, yeah, 38 years of marriage on Wednesday. So loads of anniversaries. Wow. Congratulations to you both. Thank That's you for sharing news. with us. Happy anniversary. You can see some taller children with their faces right up at the screen. <laughs> Hello, to all the children. Hi, Lucy. Can I just pick on? I just want to pick on um, Ray Dunkerson for being God. Actually, that was um, that was quite a performance, Ray. That's quite a, quite a step up the ladder. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Good big Bible story today. Enjoyed yeah. that one. Jonah. Excellent Jonah. actors. Oh. Yeah, I'm still I'm still running. <laughs> still trying to run. Uh, it was good. Um, actually, Dave, can you just flick across another screen for us? I just, if somebody caught my eye, I just wanted to say hello to. I think, I'm not sure if they're in the room, but it's Ray. I can see Ray Riccardi. I don't know if Ray uh, is there. And Marion, I, can't, I can see Ray Riccardi there. But I don't know if oh, yes, a wave. There's Ray. Uh, Ray. Great to see you. I haven't seen you for so long. It's really lovely to see you. Thank you for being here today. It's really, really great. I've just spotted Tony and Judith who are in France on holiday. So um, great that you could join us. Lovely to see you. Hope you're having a good time. Is it as hot in France as it is here? Is it? Oh. Sorry, I'm being told my wife. Unmute myself. Yes, it's quite warm over yes. here. <laughs> we had the heat wave like you did, but it's cooler now with a breeze. Good, good. Excellent. Isn't it great that people can join us on holiday? Yeah, fabulous. Love that. Fabulous. Whose dog is that in the bottom right? Very cute. Liz. Ah, like that, Liz. that is Jasper. Yeah. That's uh, our dog who's on holiday at, uh, at Claire's mum's. No, Liz. that yeah. can't be Jasper. Look how big he's got. Hence the message, hello Jasper, from our children <laughs> to, the, to their dogs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, Jasper. It's nice to see you. I just want to say hello. I just want to say hello to Percy Hammond as well. I can see Percy's joining us, and I can see see him there. It's lovely to see you, Percy. Great to have you with us this morning. And we could go through the whole list, really. Oh, sorry, sorry, nearly missed something. This is important. 
Oh. Uh, parents' 15th wedding anniversary on Thursday, um, written by Anna Armitage, as she's talking oh. about John and Debbie. Oh, so another so anniversary. Mm. Happy 15th wedding anniversary, John and Debbie. Brilliant. And thank you for reminding us, Anna. All these people who get married in the summer, isn't it? I know. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Good. Thank you for all the great messages. It's great to uh, be in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, now, has anyone doubled up today? Did anyone come to the 9 o'clock? Anne is listening at the 10.30. Two services in... <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Any, anyone? Oh, Karen, yeah. Karen's up there, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, Mike Gibson as well. So that, thank you for coming, Mike. That's great. Yeah. So a few people go for two services in the morning. Wow, that's quite yeah. impressive. We're wondering if, which, which was the best sermon, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 be, uh, I'll be basing on that one. <laughs> that Ian, the Ian preached at the 9 o'clock, which was here, and Serena <laughs> preached online at the 10.30. So, um... Who else, who else, who else uh, was spotted? Um, Look across. That's lovely from Karen. I think she's speaking about the nine o'clock, saying it was very special oh, and a real blessings. sense of God's presence. Blessings. Thank you, Karen. We just have a, I'm going to wave, wave to Jill Goddard. Hi, Jill. It's good to see you. Hello. And I'm just going to wave to Joe Snocken as well, because I don't know what Joe's doing with herself now she's retired. She had, had a quiet week. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Bless you, Joe. <laughs> Message from Susie. It's Mike's birthday, Mike Pavitt's birthday tomorrow. Yes. Hope we're able to celebrate in, in the circumstances. And uh, just a question about how Ben's getting on. It's nice to, that people uh, obviously continue to pray for Ben. Um, and uh, yeah, definite shout out to Ben in all that you're going through. And a wave to Shaney as well. Hi, Shaney. Good to see you. Lovely to see you this morning. One does see you. I'm going to say hello to everyone. I, I saw Vera this morning. Hi, Vera. Vera said Vera was outside the church this morning about 10 o'clock. She said she was going back, for the, going back for the service. Great to see you, Vera and Graham. And I can see Jean Bezzy. Hi, Jean. Great to see you. And Henley and Val Howard. I'm going through the whole list this morning. <laughs> Have everyone. Hi, everyone. We could be here a while. <laughs> um, okay, oh, great. that's great. Susie has updated us. We've been home all weekend together. It's been lovely. Oh, that is such a blessing brilliant. to hear. Thank oh, you for, for sharing yeah. that. Well, we ought to be here, really, don't we? We want everyone to be here. So we'll come. We'll we'll come. See, yeah. We're still, uh, yeah. still planning for uh, September for the 10.30 to invite people in here. We've just got to work out exactly how that might look. The, the 9 o'clock was really good, wasn't it, this morning? Um, it seemed, yeah. to, um, seemed to work well. It was very safe. Um, but, but we were able to gather, which yeah, was um, we had about twenty-five, about twenty-five people here this morning for communion, uh, which is which is really lovely. We're going to do a morning prayer service next Sunday at, at nine o'clock, and John John Bulch is going to be speaking next week. So we're looking forward to that as well. So, but don't all come to that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I was saying to me, it's the first time I've actually not wanted too many people to come to a church service. Do you go to church? Mind. Don't go to church. <laughs> 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 Good, right, we um, are almost ready for breakout groups, I think. If the technical team want to get, uh, get ready for uh, your breakout groups, we will split up. We're going to go into a group as well. I'm going to um, go and make Peter and Serena a cup of tea. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we were, at last, we were waiting. We've been waiting. Who's we'll in charge around here, don't we? <laughs> Thank you, Ian. This is, he's a very humble, servant-hearted man, and we're so blessed oh. to have him as our associate minister. And I'm not just saying that because he's making me a cup of tea. <laughs> it is the truth. I'll see you soon, everybody. God bless. Don't forget to turn your mic off. Oh, yeah, I'll be singing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear the kettle going in a minute. Brilliant. Right. Uh, we are going to wave goodbye to our live stream. So those who are joining us on YouTube and Facebook, great to have you with us. Could everyone give them uh, a wave now to say goodbye?